a new season of Mobile Legends has begun, and now we are in season 32 already. Now everybody gotta climb back their ranks again. So here's the list of the top 15 heroes that will help you solo climb the ladder and reach the highest rank with more ease. One of the most important things that I took into consideration when making this list is about how effective they are in solo rank. And as many of you already know, a lot of times you may encounter very inexperienced teammates. And when that happens, I know it's very hard to overcome, but at least this hero will give you a higher chance than others that need more support from your allies. Anyway, without further ado, let's start with the list. Roger got a very nice revamp in one of the recent updates, and now his passive allows him to deal with both tanky and squishy heroes with ease. What makes him so great in solo queue is that he can cover a lot of roles even as a jungler. Even though he's a marksman, he's still pretty sturdy. Also, his skill sets allow him to escape a lot of dangerous situations quite easily. He can clear the jungle relatively fast, can deal with tanks even in the early game, can easily finish off any squishy targets. If you can truly master Roger, you will see that you will be able to rank up a lot easier. Paquito is one of those fighters that seems to be more of an assassin than a fighter because of the insane damage output. But I can see why he's a fighter, because he's not as squishy as an assassin. And well, of course, because Joe is being a fighter. I mean, he's a boxer. Anyway, you can play him in the XP lane or even as the jungler. Either way, he can do extremely well. Just remember that in the mid to late game, it's really important to choose your target carefully. You want to prioritize the opponent's backline, because those marksmen and mages can still melt him down very quickly if you don't take care of them first. Barats also received some very nice adjustments on his skills in some of the recent updates, and right now he's considered one of the best tanky junglers in the current meta. His passive is a lot easier to get fully stacked now. His second skill has bigger range and is faster, and his ultimate is so much better now. And we all know that in solo rank, a lot of players hate the roamer role, and a lot of them would rather pick a damage dealer support or a squishy support. In those instances, you really want to have a good frontline jungler, or else your team will be way too squishy. But what makes Barat stand out from the rest of the tanky junglers is that he can still dish out so much damage even if you build him with full tank build, and maybe with just one offensive item like War Axe. Ixia is one of the most reliable marksmen in solo rank, because when chasing your team, it doesn't matter how badly your team is losing, there will always be a light of hope to make a comeback. And you probably have experienced a lot of times that your whole team struggles for the majority of the early game to mid game, and there's not much you can do when you're the marksman. So you need to play a marksman that's guaranteed to be really, really good for those late game comebacks. And the main reason why she's so good is because of her insanely OP ultimate. All you need is to land one really good ult and you can completely turn the tide of battle in a single team fight. But what a lot of players struggle with is her lack of mobility. So if your positioning and map awareness are not that great, you will be quite the easy targets for the opponents. Ruby just keeps getting buff after buff and now she's burn line quite OP. Not only does she have tons of CC skills and with very low cooldown, but can do a lot of damage and sustain a lot at the same time, making her super annoying to deal with. In solo rank, it's a huge bonus when a hero can deal damage and tank at the same time. Also, because of how insanely good she is right now, she can be even played as the roamer or the offlaner. Just build her with some cooldown reduction items and you'll be able to spam her skills non-stop. CC used to be perma banned when she was just released, but after she got nerfed in one of the recent updates, 
now players are not banning her that often. But even after a nerf, she is currently one of the best fighters out there. If played properly, she can become the ultimate pest to the opponent's team. She can constantly keep harassing the enemy's backline, which will allow your whole team to kill the rest of them. And if they have a marksman that relies on attack speed items, then just use Vengeance, jump right into their backline, and you can easily take their marksman out of the picture. Granger as the marksman is not very great, but as the jungler, he's pretty solid. He can clear the jungle really fast, which will allow you to rotate quickly and get an advantage right from the start. Clearing the jungle fast is really important in solo rank, because a lot of times your allies don't have good map awareness, so they don't know when to play aggressively or passively. That's why if you can rotate faster, you can counter gank the opponents more often. Also, he has a lot of mobility, which really allows him to move around the map quickly and not the easiest to target. Novaria is a hero that you either love or hate. I have seen a lot of players saying that she's absolutely useless, and then some say that she's so broken that she should be banned more often. I have seen Novarias who eat almost every single shot, and then some that can only target Natalia. When Novaria can land most of her hits, you will see that the game seems almost too one-sided. But when she can't, it feels like your team has an AFK player. But the reason she's included in this list is because as long as you keep playing the hero, you'll master it someday, and once you have truly mastered Novaria's shot, you'll become the opponent's worst nightmare. Guinevere did receive a nerf recently, but I have tried her after a nerf, and I will say that she's still a very solid fighter. Also, she's so versatile, you can play her as the jungler, EXP, or even as the roamer. What makes her so incredibly powerful is the ability to be able to jump into the fight, and if things are not looking too good, a lot of times you'll be able to escape easily. But Gora made those in-game decisions quickly though. Also, her skills have very low cooldown, so if your team has a roamer like Atlas or Tigreal, and the opponents have Diggy and Purify spells, you can make them waste those and allow your roamer to do what he has to do. Harley is another jungler that can clear the jungle really fast, even without the help of your team. In solo rank, you never know what kind of teammates you will get, so you really want to have really low expectations and expect to do most of the things alone. And Harley is one of the best at that. He can get a lot of things done alone, which is really important in solo rank. But most importantly, he can take down the opponent's main damage dealers with relative ease and make them have a hard time farming in the early game. Just make sure to constantly keep ganking, because if you allow the opponents to farm easily in the early game, then hardly becomes less and less scary as the game goes on. Brody is one of the heaviest hitters in the early game for the gold lane, especially once he gets his ult. Once he's level 4, you can zone out a lot of the marksmen in the game. There are only a handful of marksmen that can deal with his poking in the early game. Two basic attacks, one first skill and ult, that's all that's needed to kill a full HP marksman. But don't get too carried away, because the opponents will mostly gain your lane first, so always pay attention to which buff the opponent's jungler took first, so you will know if he's gonna rotate towards your lane first or not. Harith is slowly coming back into the meta. In fact, I think he's already there. People used to play him solely as the jungler, but currently he's more suitable for the gold lane. The reason for that is because he can win against pretty much any marksman in the game in 1v1. And since he has so many dashes, he's not the easiest to kill, which is something a lot of marksmen struggle in the game. But before you pick him, make sure that your jungler is not a magic damage dealer as well, because then it will be very easy for the opponents to build against your team.
Martis used to be banned quite often as well, but lately I don't see him banned that much anymore. I don't really recall that he got a huge nerf either, but since he's not getting banned that much anymore, he's still a very solid pick. A lot of heroes struggle with CC skills, but if you can time his second skill, you won't have that much issue against those heroes. What I like about him is that once you really get going in the early game, it's really hard to stop him. And then you can single handedly completely destroy the opponents and not give them a chance to make a comeback. Helcor is probably one of the most underrated assassins right now. He can one shot most of the squishy heroes in the game, can clear the jungle extremely fast, has tons of mobility can easily jump into the opponent's backline and then escape easily because of his ult. Can split push if needed and not get caught, once again because of his ult. But probably if you don't have much experience with him, your ult timing might be off, which I have seen a few headquarters on my team ulting way too early and not taking full advantage of his ult, and then end up dying because the effect of the ult runs out before they could do much. This might come as a surprise for many, because Chang'e doesn't seem to be that popular for the mage pick in the current meta. But let me tell you that in solo rank, she's one of the most effective mages right now, along with Novaria. The reason for that is because she can solo disrupt and delay the opponent's jungler farm if he gets careless just for one moment. Also, because of the nerf on Radiant Armor, D was pretty much above for her. She hurts a lot now. But more importantly, she's really not that easy to kill if you're really good with her. And if push comes to shove, she can clear away from a safe distance, making it quite hard for the opponents to push the base. There are some honorable mentions, and the reason they are here is because they are either banned too often, or because they tend to rely more on their teammates and cannot do much alone. And that's all for this list. But remember, the often time is not about the heroes themselves, but more about how well you know the hero and if you have truly mastered them. Anyway, good luck with the rest of this season and happy ranking up. See ya.